The general close of military operations is the key moment at which HL must cease to apply with respect to international armed conflict. But what is the meaning of this expression? One view shared by several scholars, as well as the RCRC, is that the general clause of military operation must be understood as broadly as possible in order to ensure HL is maintained until there is no real likelihood that hostilities will resume in the near future. This interpretation could indeed limit the risk of having any revolving door between the applicability and non-applicability of IHL, and then reduce legal uncertainty. Such a view is shared by the ICTY, which asserted that the termination of an international armed conflict had to be sufficiently general, definitive, and effective so as to end the application of the law of armed conflict. And then it used the general clause military operation test to assess whether, in the case before it, the armed conflict had ceased. In that view, the general clause of military operations must go beyond the cessation of active hostilities, that is, the actual fighting between the belligerents. The general clause of military operations has therefore been interpreted by the RCRC as referring to the end of military movement of a bellicose nature, including those that reform, reorganize, or reconstitute. Essentially, combat has ceased. In addition, the clause of the military operations must be general. It must happen between all belligerents and not only some of them. This view, nonetheless, raises some questions. Firstly, some scholars argue that it is difficult in practice to distinguish between the clause of active hostilities and the general clause of military operations. Both may occur at the same time. They tend to call into question the distinction between the two. An argument may be held in favor of merging them. Indeed, we have seen that persons detained must be released without delay at the end of the activity, active hostilities. So if we interpret those terms more narrowly than the general clause of military operations, this would mean that persons detained, including prisoners of war, should be released before the time when it is assumed that there is no real possibility of resumption of hostilities in the near future. This seems quite unrealistic, as states may only be ready to release prisoners of war if hostilities have ended permanently. More generally, it is not clear why the required degree of permanence regarding the cessation of the conflict would be different for determining the end of application of IHL in general, than the degree of permanence necessary for determining the starting point of the implementation of, of obligation to release detained persons. In that sense, there should not be any distinction between the general clause of military operations and the end of active hostilities, although a different technology is used. Both would refer to the end of the armed conflict and imply a similar degree of stability. Secondly, we may doubt whether any threshold based on solely on the occurrence of an objective set of facts is capable of ensuring that the conflict has ended with a sufficient degree of stability. Can we be sure that the hostilities will not resume? after the general clause of military operations, whatever the meaning we give to those terms. There are different ways to deal with that issue. We may first add to the requirement that the military operation, operations must have generally ceased a second requirement, that such a cessation 
must occur with no real likelihood of a resumption of hostilities in the near future. We may also consider that the general clause of military operations only serve as a rebuttable presumption that the hostilities will not resume soon. In both cases, belligerents could contest the end of the application of IHL in general or the release of the detained person despite the general clause of the military operations. They could argue that there is still a probability that hostilities will resume in the future. This has been invoked in practice by states to retain prisoners of war long time after the end of the conflict. This seems highly problematic, since it makes the application of IHL dependent upon a probability and the assessment of such a probability by belligerent is a much more subjective process than the assessment of the occurrence of a material situation, in particular, the general clause of military operations. <laughs>